Okay. Uh, we're, we're carrying on with uh, the series called The Knife, and we're doing the eight. I think we've done two already. We're on to the third. What are called what's called Bagua knife. Not that it has anything to do with Bagua Xiang. Bagua meaning eight di eight diagram or eight method of the knife. That's what we're doing. Uh, before I do that, uh, there are still people. I, I just cannot understand why why people are still doing stupid methods. I cannot stress this enough that you must never grab the hand with the knife. So I'm going right back to the beginning because this chap came over, they brought him over, some mob brought him over from Australia and he's supposed to be some knife god and he's saying things like, well I'm not going to teach you anything complicated because the simpler the better. I'm thinking, hmm, oh yeah, okay. This is sounding good, really simple, yeah, fantastic. Hit him, bang. And then, so his simple method was some, and it's always like this. That's how he gets people to attack him. You know? It's never like, Dah! it's never like that, for instance. It's always, okay, you attack me, uh, okay. So his simple, his method was, okay, something like this. Okay, you block the hand, the knife, and you lock his wrist, and then you disarm him, and then you hit him. And I'm thinking to myself, these people are standing there paying this guy money to come over here and teach them methods that are going to get themselves killed. Amazing. I mean, you know, people see that, and even if you do it a little faster, you know, he can put it on, he can tell you. You're supposed to drop the knife. You know, and people are a novice or, or some beginners will be sitting there thinking, oh, wow, oh, that's great, you know. But first of all, he's not attacking the way I'm teaching you to attack. First of all, we, we teach you attack like that. Get your little lock on now, sir. In fact, I've got a stand, I've put it out on some, some website saying I have a standing challenge. Anyone who can grab my hand before I hit them, I'll bow down to them and call them master. See? So, I'll say, well, okay, you grab my hand. Oh, yeah, okay. Is that what you're going to do? Okay. Boom! Did you grab my hand? No! <laughs> you're dead! Bye. So they just don't, they don't consider these things. It's always like this. Things that work in the class don't work in the street. That's why we always try to make it as realistic in the street as in the street as possible. And you must always assume the worst scenario. And that is someone who knows how to, even if it's a kid, you assume that he knows how to use the knife. Because I always tell people, you're dead. That's how much it takes with a knife before you're dead from this distance. So you have to know at least the 15%. You have to have at least a 15% chance, and that's all you really got against the knife. So better to have that than no percent whatsoever. So what I'm gonna do in the beginning, the whole of our boxing system is based upon this, and we did this, some of this stuff last night. The whole of the system is literally based upon your partner goes to attack you. That's what it's based upon. It's total that's it, here is. Excellent. Ah, oh, Faithy, yeah, you're doing it. Yeah. Come on. Go around. That's it. Yeah, he's doing it. Yeah. That's it. It's based upon this. It's based upon the fact that you're not thinking about the person. I know it's difficult if, he has, if he's got a knife to not think about, you know, there's a knife there. But you really do have a much better chance if you're not thinking about anything. You're just taking that person's whole body into perspective. And what you have to learn to do, 
I always went to hit him then, because he moves his hand and scratches his head, you see. You've got to learn to move when your opponent moves. It doesn't matter if he goes like this, you move. That's when you move, you see. So you, you must take the person's body into account. I, Iris went like that then, and I almost hit Eli. <laughs> Because you you're not sitting there thinking, oh, I wonder what he's going to hit. You just, you, you're trying eagle vision. I haven't spoken about eagle vision for many years. Eagle vision, the eagle doesn't see a rat from, you know, wherever he is, you know, 400 feet up in the air, and then think, oh, I'm going to get that rat. The eagle subconsciously locks his energy onto that rat. No matter where the rat goes, the, e the eagle automatically just follows. It doesn't think, oh, it's going this way now. Oh, oh, oh it's over there now. It's just going and plucks the rat out, even if it's running. Or a fish. You've all seen those beautiful pictures of the eagle coming out and, and getting a fish. And that's what eagle vision's all about. We lock our energy onto this object in front of us. So if that object moves, we move. And that's, I cannot stress that enough. That's it, Taiji in a nutshell. That's what Taiji is. He moves, we move. That's what our push hands is about. He moves, we move. We're locking our body onto his energy. Not a, in the beginning, his physical presence, obviously, is causing us to move. But as we progress, we learn Feel what his energy is going to do. So it doesn't matter if he does an almighty grab of your wrist or whatever it is. You learn to react to what his energy is doing. And so you work, you react at exactly the same time he moves. Rather than waiting for him to punch and then getting hit. See? So that's one of the training methods we were doing last night. I would have hit Eli already because his fist is there, you see. I want, to, I want to strike him already. So we start with our hands like that. Because as soon as you move your hand up, you hit him. That's the rule. Now, obviously, you're going to hit him from this distance because you can get him. You never ever look at your target. You're going to see the target I'm looking. That's our iris there. But, I, but I'm really seeing Eli's neck. So, but I'm not going up ah, like that, that'll slow me down. I'm literally up. Ah. You see how the fingers were thrown out, so it's far gene, the fingers were like that. See how, like a snake. And that has enough power. <laughs> and you're not going to hurt your fingers either, because they're coming up and they're being pulled back as you strike, because that's like a whip. There's a whip. My fingernails are a guitar playing finger through the other hand. <laughs> and you're not going <laughs> like this. It's I'll get on using my fingers now because I don't want to scratch your guys' hand up. That's what you're doing, see? <laughs> so you must get that, you must hear the sound of one hand clapping. See that? I don't know if you can pick that up there, but you can all hear that sound. I can hear it anyway. There's the sound. That's only because my arm is so loose and sore that when I turn my waist violently, left, right, left, it turns it out and then as it hooks back the other way violently, it causes the whip to go out. You see, it comes out and then flicks back and that's the strike. It only goes in that far. And that's all you need from these areas here. That's all you need here, here. You only don't. You don't need that much. She doesn't have to be big, ah, like this. Just whoop, that's all you need. And that's, I'm putting this in the knife series because that's what, what we'll be doing with the knife in it as well. It's exactly the same thing. If Eli has a knife, it's up, well, I can't really do it with Eli's hand. That's why we've got those little sticks there. We're considering that's his arm. That's, that's not a long knife, of course. As soon as he goes to strike you, yeah! And then, of course, ah. but never try and do anything fancy. And that's not fancy. That's literally. And what did I do then?